Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode 12. Okay, so we now know how devious a duelist Roa is. Okay, his well, his dueling style is a bit creepy because well, Ayana, <laughs> Yuga versus Roa. His main issue with Yuga is the legality of Sevens Road Magician. You, you ace card ni, ni Yuga. We well, we found out because he went to ni Yuga. He got that at a um, at a Goha Duel tournament. Then suddenly, sumingit yung yung duelist na kalaban yun during the um, when he was in, during episode one that when he was trying to install the rush duel format in Goha system. Okay, siya pala ang nagbigay ng Seven Road Magician ni Yuga. I think that was the uh, I think that was the focal point of uh, of the entire rush duel format. In both theory and practice, whoever creates the format, it's impossible. It's impossible to beat. All right. <laughs> With this, uh, all throughout the duel, okay, uh, at least in this part, all throughout the duel, Ro Roa is insisting na illegal na card ang seven Soul magician. Okay. So, look in the others. Uh, Went their went their way to to find anybody who uh, who has a copy of that card. Because if talaga nag-iisa lang yon, it's illegal. Pero kung well, if someone else has has such a card, hindi illegal yon. So it's playable according to Goha rules, according to according to Goha Goha company policy. Kumbaga. Here his his combos Roas Roas combos consisted uh, half the time. Of making of making the opponent draw as many cards as uh, making the opponent draw as many cards. Uh, maga, I think the objective here, Roa, is to deck Yuga out. Because Ross do well, eh. so mas mabilis yung mas mabilis yung chance na ma deck out ka, which is in reality true. Okay, kaya well uh, side fact. Kaya pag nagrelas do well ka in real life, do not. Limit your cards to just 40. Okay. Make it at least uh make it at least 45. Make it at least 45 para hindi ka ma deck out agad. So that's the uh, that's the hitch of rush duels, whether it be in the anime or in real life. Power tip sa inyo yun when it comes to when it comes to playing the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Now back to the story. So eto, okay. He's making he's making Yuga draw cards at every chance he gets. Then the final card that he uses is a well-known card even in even in the actual card game. Okay? Let me let me show you my copy of that card. It's in here. Let me check. Can <clears throat> This card in Rush Duel Print you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Medyo malabo eh. So, I'm going to take it out of its sleeve para medyo maliwana. It's double sleeve eh. Kasi for tournament purposes eh. That card! Okay? Card Destruction. Siyempre, sa, sa anime, it's Rush Duel Print. Uh, I, I don't... Yeah, meron na yata ang Rush Duel Print ito eh. But this is the OCG print. Okay? I've had this card for a very long time. Probably since um, probably since the late twenty late two thousands, I have this card now. So, card destruction. Puta card destruction. Tandaas magpatron yan. Eto ang huling card na ginamit ni Roa against Yuga, just for him to force, actually forcing him to draw. Five, because eh, wala na eh, empty hand na eh. And we all saw at the end of the episode, ayun nga, seventh road. Because the moment Yuga draws that card, he loses the duel. So, dun natigil ang episode. Actually, this card, okay, card destruction, is well, limited in, in the OCG. Meaning, you own, you... Um, you're just limited to one copy of this card because um, I think it was one of the very first one of the very first cards on 
on on the ban list. Ever since the ever since the ban list was implemented, this was one of the first cards on R1 or limited. Kasi ganun 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 ka abusive ang effect nito. Right? Ganun ka abusive. So, again, Roma used this against Yuga just to force him to to draw seven sword magician and lose the duel. Uh, it kept me to the edge of my seat, okay, this entire episode. Now, the duel isn't over, all right? Tignan natin sa next episode kung ano ang gagawin ni Yuga. He's been silent half, uh, he has been silent half the time. He's letting Roa talk. He's letting Roa shit talk him. So, I, I don't know if it's his strategy, uh, if it's, uh, I think, I think it is true. I think it is true. Uh, everything Roa has been, Roa has said so far in in this episode is true. For um, for keeping me to the edge of my seat, but bitin eh. Okay, bitin. But uh, it's giving me the prospect that wow, Yuga might lose the duel. Okay. For the first time, for the first time, Yuga might lose the duel. An official duel at that. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 12, two thumbs up. <laughs> Kasi, well, like I said kanina, like I said a while ago, uh, kept me to the edge of my seat. And we now, we all know, we now know how devious Roa is. Talagang, he is the villain here. He is, uh, not. I don't want to say a rival, but for me, uh, Yuga's main rival is Rook. Roa hasn't proven himself yet in this show. So, for now, um, Yuga's main rival, although kakampi niya, si, is Rook. Okay? It's not the first time that happened in this franchise. Well, Yusei had Jack. Okay? Kaibigan niya yun, kakampi niya. Pero, in, oh, when the show ended, talagang, he is, Jack is uh, Yusei's main rival. So, nga. Yeah. It, it wasn't the first time that um, that an ally of the main protag is also his main rival. So yeah, get to the edge of my seat, and wow, okay. vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! I haven't had, I haven't felt this much suspense in a Yu-Gi-Oh! epic in uh, in any uh, in in any Yu-Gi-Oh! episode since Duel Monsters. Yun. Since that show. And uh, it made me feel nostalgic because Roa used this card against Yuga. Okay. Card destruction. I feel honored. Okay. Personally, I feel honored as a player that this card was featured in this episode. Because uh, I myself have a copy. Okay. You see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. OCG print ito, ha? The one being used in the, the one that you that was used in the episode is the Rush Duel print. So, uh, I, I, you've seen a Rush Duel print of this? Comment below, and if you have a, and if you have an Instagram like me, send it to me. All right, I DM you sa akin. Okay, DM it. Give me a photo DM of this, uh, of of, uh, of its Rush Duel print. Okay. So again, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode 12, two thumbs up. Mm. Hey! So, I am more than excited now for episode 13. Who is going to be, who is going to be the real king? Now, he seen you guys not interested in being king because he is the creator of Rush Duels. Why, why be not, bakit, bakit king lang? Ikaw nga ang gumawa ng Rush Duel format eh. Okay, chill! Okay. You ask me, time to, it's time for Yuga to, to say to Roa, time to meet your maker. God of High School, Episode 8. Let me remind you guys, we are now in the final Five episodes. Tang inang yan. 
Sa baba kasi liba! Uh, the action sort of picked up. Okay. So we see uh, we see another uh, another three on three battle. Right? Someone almost uh, the team by uh, uh, what's it called? What's his name again? Excuse me. His name is Park Il Pio. Okay. So we see we saw we saw in that episode that uh, he's a master of Taekyun. A long forgot, uh, well, it's called an ancient martial art from Korea. And wow! Okay? His team loves to, loves to axe kick their opponents in the gym. Para sigurado nga out, okay? No matter, well, it's a, it's a, it's a well-known fact in martial arts. You hit someone here on the chin, guaranteed, pangsak yun. <laughs> Yeah, even as even as an even as an act of self defense, you hit someone here, right, right here, well placed. That's a takedown. <laughs> you can take that opponent down, just like that. And so, uh, Park Ilpio's team did. They won that battle, and Team Soul saw that. Now, the episode started with that, but we don't know. Uh, what happened to Daiwi's encounter with Jigal? Sinuspindi pala si Daiwi! But, uh, ang nakapagtataka, hindi sinuspindi rin ni, um, ni, uh, what's it called? Ni Park Mujin, or pinaka-organizer, si Jigal. Talagang roughhousing yung ginawa niya. Which is, uh, which is not allowed in, to, which is not allowed in this tournament. He said to one of the six na, he might be the key. Kinabayaan. Then, of course, Park, Park Elpio, uh, on a side, on, in a, uh, on an, on an off night, he met, uh, he met Mori. Wow, he introduced himself in a, in a really rough way. Kumbaga, hinaman yung nasuntukan si Mori. Pak, pak. He held back. Mori also held back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tangi na yan! I-reverse axe kick sana ni Mori sa bubuhulan ng puta! Bubutasin yung bungo! Mori was about to axe kick his brains out. Oh. Uh, the two uh, got acquainted and suddenly Jigal interferes. I made, I sometimes make the wrong assumptions, alright? Jigal is it Daiwi's rival. But Park Ilpios, matagal na palang magkaaway ang dalawang ito. Okay. Every time they would see each other, they will kill each other. So, Jigal makes the first move. Ilpio, Ilpio counters it kasi kausap pa niya si Mori. Uh, to Ilpio, that's uncalled for. Kasi eh, may madadamay na... Uh, may madadamay na walang kamuang mong salaban sa uh, away nila Oh, yon. And uh, as the episode goes, uh, Mori was, con- was was utterly confused because he was sa kanya ng executive committee, lalo si si Park Mojin, that his grandfather is missing. Pinakita yung photos uh, of his of his last uh, of his last encounter with Knox. So, medyo naging concerned. Shepley, Lolo, uh, the grandson is concerned about the grand about his grandfather. You can't, you can't take that away. And, yun nga. And, later on in the episode, we found out that it is Mori's birthday today. Alright, so, may, nag, may nag-notify kila, kila Daiwi at Mira that it, is, that it was his birthday. So, threw him a party. Like, duh! He works in a restaurant! <laughs> <laughs> you almost <know>, not. <laughs> wow, ang lakas pala. Ang lakas pala kumain nito si Mo. Okay, ang lakas. Wala si Bia kito diet dito. <laughs> Wala si Bia kito diet dito. So, yeah, they greet, they greet my happy birthday. And they they come to an agreement that so much is at stake in this tournament. So much is at stake. 
it might cost them their lives. So, I've been excited for the next episode because it's about it's heating up next. Starting actually, did the heat the build up did not actually start in this episode. It started in episode seven. It actually started in episode seven. It showed this episode also showed um, the. Um, the motivation behind Morris, uh, behind Morris, uh, what you call this, uh, drive for excellence. Is uh, yung pangungulilan, pangungulilan niya sa grandfather, sa lolo niya, si Jin Tai Jin. One of the, um, one of the most, one of the, one of the greatest Taekwondo masters of all time. As, as this, uh, as this, as this show is being. As this show is uh, slowly giving clues about it, eh? of how great, of how dangerous a fighter his grandfather is. Siempre alas alas sa kay Jin Tai Jin sa lolo niya. Just goes to show you how um, how human, how human Mori is. It's, it shows here in that episode, so it's understandable. But don't get me wrong, okay? The action is there in the first part. All right. We now know that Park Ilpyo and Jigal are mortal enemies. They are mortal enemies. It's Mori's birthday. And see the last part in the episode. Someone uh, someone sent him a letter with a map and a picture of his grandfather all beaten and chained up. Whoa! What, what? What the fuck? Okay. After celebrating his birthday, he receives this. God of episode. Oh, <laughs> uh, God of episode. God of high school episode eight. Yeah, two thumbs up. A silent two thumbs up. We finally got to show. We finally got to see how human Mori can be. And well, this episode proved me wrong about. Uh, the impending rivalry between Daiwi and Jigal. Nope, that's far from it. Jigal's real rival here is Ilpio. Okay. Mortal na magkaaway. Magpapatayan ng dalawang to tuwing nagkikita. Alright? That's, that's the epitome of mortal enemies. Okay. So wherever, wherever, they, wherever, wherever they see each other, they will kill each other. So I, I would love to see this, uh, this side story pan out. I would love to see this um, this rivalry, okay? this um, oh, this this heated rivalry, be showcased in later episodes. Because patapos nare ng patapos nare ng God of High School. Eh. So we're now down to the last four episodes, but it is heating up. So Team Soul has realized how much how how much at stake is in this tournament. Okay? Not just they they have to. They have to win with their lives, but Mori has to Mori has to win this as well for his grandfather, for the safety of his grandfather. I think that I think he will realize that in the next episode. So, God of High School episode eight again, two thumbs up. I just can't wait for the next. I just can't wait for the next episode. Okay, so tutok lang mga lifestyle tutok lang because patapos na ang God of High School. GB8 episode 7. Well, Ayame has formally introduced herself through uh, her own uh, cam video. The one that. Uh, what, what's that girl's name? Kathleen. <laughs> it's uh, SOP na kay Kathleen yung pag document ng mga. pag document ng mga intros naman ka sa mga kanya. And Ayame was no exception. She recorded uh, a video intro of Ayame. She found out that she's only half Japanese. Her mom is Chinese. So, through, um, through her restaurant owner employer, she was able to learn martial arts. Kaya palang pagsik sa labanan. <laughs> okay? Then, well, of course, we all we know we all know that 
I am his father is Yakuza. Is a Yakuza boss. Yung palang dahilan na para i-divorce siya ng nanay niya. So, to, so they, of course, uh, tulong siya ng nanay niya to live in that Chinese restaurant where her mother works. So, Naturoon siya ng, ng martial arts ng mismong owner ng restaurant. Well, kakamunin nila uli ng away. Mang, ito nung, ito namang, ito namang tatay niyang gago. Alright? Their, their food supplies running low. He decides to go after them again. He wants a rematch. Nabutan, nabutan ng, nabutan ng grupo niya, ang grupo nila, nila Ayame, sila Sensui and others. He started, uh, Sorry, cutting them off. Pagay nyo! Tangay na camper kayo eh! Mas malaki kayo! Then, all of a sudden, yung GBA na nakalaban nila in episode 3? Where they, where they met Yuki Nojo? You guys still remember that GBA? Yung, yung binangga, yung ang pinambangga ni, ni Tenro ko para lang, para lang madali is is the is a helicopter <laughs> he made a he made a helicopter crash on it but lo and behold it's still alive <laughs> and in front of their eyes it evolved mas mas mo ang tao ngayon what the hell tot din lang din na naging T-Rex ang Ijura! Holy shit! Taka na naging dinosaur! It evolves right in front of their eyes. They actually gave that Jibia a name. Meteora. Grabe. Alright. It looked more human when we first encountered it again. Then, Nung sinalubungan na siya nila, nila, nila sensuit, nila sensuit, kero ko, boom! It evolved. It, its form is now scarier, and it's more dinosaur-like. It has eyes from here down to its spine. Holy shit! Alright? Scary as fuck! Probably the scariest Jibia So far, okay. the scariest GBA so far. Wow, and well, comparing, uh, the a normal human to, to it, it's, it would probably be as tall as a Velociraptor. Okay, so, talagang, well, minus the, minus the, minus the, minus the number of eyes running down its spine, it, it looks, it looks dinosaur-like. So, Sinagupa na muna nila Sensui at Kenro ko. They're having problems, okay? It's its skill is really tough. Hindi maka hindi makataga na mabuti si Sensui. And Kenro ko's cords which can usually which usually cuts off limbs. Nope. Yung pala patid. Yung pala patid. For the first time, Kenro ko's cords snap. While in combat, okay. that's how tough this GBO was, si Meteora. <clears throat> Then, well, of course, uh, Yuki Nojo, uh, since we assigned Yuki Nojo to the rescue efforts, kasi ang unang nakasagupa actually ng Meteora was, was, uh, was the Yakuza Gan. Okay, I'm gonna call them the Yakuza Gan because they were, because they're being led by Ayame's father who is a former Yakuza boss. Mga escape convict to. So, let's call them the Yakuza Gun. Alright? So, sila ang una naka... Sila ang una naka... Ano, sila ang unang talagang naka, nakaharap ng GBN na to. So, they were scared as fuck. Their van was instantly... Poof, brushed away like a... Like a kind of dog food or something. By, by this GBN. So... Since we assigned Yuki Nojo to do the to, to do the rescue efforts, we managed to manage to rescue all of them. 
Then Ayame comes up with a plan. Nakita niya eh. Nahihirapan yung tatlo. Yung tatlo niyang kasama. Okay. She took matters into his own hands. Into her, into her own hands. She gets an old car. That worked. <clears throat> Ayun. Binangga niya doon sa Jibia. <laughs> Talagang inararo niya yung Jibia until um, uh, until uh, na natamaan na nila yung railing which leads to a river. Just at the, just at the proper moment I may jump out of the car. Ayun. Pinabayaan ng anurin ng ano. She, she let the river do it, do its damage on the Jibia. Now, as the looks of it, that Jibia is still not dead. Okay? It survived a, uh, it survived a very high fall and a helicopter crash, so to speak. That river is not going to kill it. Okay? That Jibia will be back for them. Sanya. So now, the chaos is all over. Ayame confronts her father. What's the point in arresting her arresting her father? There's no law and order right now. <laughs> There's no law and order right now. Basically, she told her father to well to get lost and clean up his act. At at confusing times like this, you still think of uh, you still think of killing people. Basically, you know, basically that's what she said. Well, she has a point. She has a point. With the entire world in chaos, and with the entire human population dwindling, dwindling by the day, makakaisi ka pa ng, makakaisi ka pa ng mga pahihiraan yung pagkakriminal mo. Yeah? See? Let them, they let them, uh, they let them go their way. Let them go there, man. Hindi wala na sila ng landas. Ayame simply, well, gave her father a fair warning that she doesn't want to see him again. Talagang. Uh, that's the tone, that's the tone of voice of one disgruntled daughter. Well, while this was going on, while she was, um, giving her father a mouthful, an earful, alright? Sensu it falls ill again. Kasado na naman. So, by the time uh, they were already already looking for some place to stay, kasado na naman sa, sa loob ng camper si, si Sensu Wei. Sensu Wei is sick again. Alright? Um, so they found a food factory which is infested with Jibia. The, um, the, uh, the grasshopper type. So what uh, what I what Ayami did, she took the first step. She took them all out. So it's na. So everything was clear. They're, they 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 started moving in. Everyone had to pitch into just to carry him. All of a sudden, uh, Kathleen's mom was suddenly stung by a Jibia. Puta! Nastinger! Yari! That's when the episode ended. Ooh. Wow. Talk about plot twists. The previous episode, uh, looking back at it, it compares nothing to uh, this episode's ending. It's a much better ending. Okay? It's a much better ending. And how it started, ah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a former Yakuza boss. You're... You're... Uh, your status as an alpha male is at stake, so you got so you gotta chase down the good guys and get their food, probably kill them all. Yeah. 
fucking pathetic. Right? This year was a boss. Uh, this year was a this year was a boss. Uh, who is uh, who is I am his father? Must have. Should I say it? Must have uh, left his balls in prison. Must forgot to forgot to uh, forgot to take his balls with him when he escaped out of prison. All right. My God. Uh, yeah, that's how the episode ended. And plot twists. Wow. Okay. When it comes to plot twists, uh, GB8 uh, redeemed itself here. The last one, uh, I was, I was tell you the truth, I wasn't actually, I wasn't actually convinced. It didn't give me the uh, like that, that expression. Uh, you couldn't see that in the reactions, but deep inside, that's how, that's how, uh, that's how blown my mind was when I saw this ending. So, let me drink first. Episode 7 Two thumbs up Okay So Wow Alright After um, After going all out again With a With a, with a seemingly un, Unkillable Jibia Hey that will, that will take a lot out of you That will take a lot out of you If you're sensory Especially if you just came out of A um, Call this uh, a flu spell, so to speak, a flu spell, and you suddenly, uh, then, then you <clears throat> go out and try to kill a, a, a seemingly unkillable G, GBA. That will take a lot out of you. So, fall kill, fall kill again. Um, please become a liability again to the group. I don't want to use that line, but it's 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 obvious. It, it is fucking obvious. He's a liability again to the group. But what can you do? Um, surviving in a world like this <clears throat> makes you want to think if you're if you're sensory, makes you want to think that you makes you want to think to to go back to your era again. Find a way to go back to your time again, well, which is which is much easier, which is much, which is fairly easier. Just here. There is, uh, there's chaos at every turn. And for someone who is uh, from a more, a more peaceful era compared to this one, okay, to a more peaceful era, that can be stressful. I guess Sensu is the first, the first to fall victim to this kind of stress. You can call it PTSD. I don't know. I don't know if that qualifies as PTSD. If you don't know what PTSD means, it means Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. Remind you, PTS, the term PTSD doesn't even exist during Sensui's time. It only, uh, someone only came up with that term in the 1940s or 50s, um, during, probably after World War II or during the Korean War. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not exactly on the history of words. On terms of acronyms, right? <laughs> so the group respond now. Now that Kathleen's mother has been stung, and and the prospect of her turning into a GBA are almost one hundred percent. Okay, how will the group respond now? That's what we have to wait for in the next episode. This is one hell of a plot twist. Okay? Yung nani mismo ni Kathleen ang nastinger. Nastinger ng isang GBA. So, I want to see uh, how how Kathleen will respond to this. I want to see how, how the daughter responds. That will, that will probably be the highlight of the next episode. Yung nani niya. And, uh, and, the, and the, uh, the medical specialist of the group, kasi eh, doktore. Doktora siya the group needs her. The group actually needs her. Kasi she's a doctor. Yeah, pag merong susugatan sa kanila or nai-injure, nai. Like, like what happened to Sensory again in this episode. So, siya ang, siya ang tumututo sa condition ni Sensory. Because she is the doctor of the group. 
that is my explanation of why I gave it the two thumbs up. GB8 episode 7. Overall, uh, we have seen we're actually now in the second half of this show. And so far, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good one. It, it's yet to it's yet to convince me to give it the give it a, a rating lower than lower than one pump up. It hasn't given me that it hasn't given me that reason. So that's a good so it's the mark of a good anime. Right? So Maka Lifestyle, I'll see you in the next episode of GBA. Right? Do not miss this anime, alright? Almost forgot this. <laughs> Decadence episode 8. Well, um, we found out that. Uh, we found out in this episode that, well, Kaburagi is now hell bent on, well, destroying the system. Okay? That has been uh, the system that has been plaguing, no, no, not exactly plaguing, that has been controlling cyborg life for too long. Right? And the first step is to recover his old avatar. I guess the quest for Kaburagi's old avatar, avatar has begun. Uh, uh, a, a team was assembled, including Jill, Donatello, and si, si Sarkozy Kasamarin, who's now known as Sark. Pinigling pangala niya. And, um, and of course, um, Donatello's right hand man, so to speak. So they stage a rescue mission for, for Kaburagi's old avatar, and they almost did not accomplish it. <clears throat> and, side note, we were able to see the real Minato in this episode. Alright? His, uh, his actual cyborg form. The one we're used to is, well, re remember guys. The humans depicted in this anime are just avatars. The real, char the real characters in this anime are the cyborgs. Alright? Minato's uh, actual form, we now know what it looks like. And wow, stylish. Okay. Japorms. <laughs> Medyo Japorms sa kinsura niya. Pero, ano, um, since na long-time friend na ni Kaburagi ito, who's been, who, ha, who has toiled and battled with him all throughout. All throughout their, all throughout their friendship. And, well, he had a hand in it. He sort of had a hand in it, si Minato. Because he has been illegally keeping uh, downed avatars. He has been illegally keeping downed avatars as a uh, collection. Let's just say his collection. Now, the one that uh, disabled Kaburagi in episode, well, episode episode 5, we now know his name. Hugin. Ah, shades na ganun. Even even his cyborg form has has shades like that. Even his even his avatar, okay? even his avatar has shades like that. Okay? So you know it's him. You know it's him. Okay? <clears throat> they were almost caught by Hugin. Kasi naka, nakarinig ng kakaibang ingay si Hugin. He invited Minato to to that stash of Minatos. Napawis sa na si Minato. Nakabahan eh. siya ng parang hindi tama. He sought the sort. He sought, he sought out the source. They were almost caught here. Kaburagi and company were almost almost got caught here. So, mission accomplished. And what? Well, Kaburagi left a little gift for, uh, for Minato. For pulling through for him. A um, 
pleasure gun. <laughs> so, akala ni Hugin, there's a uh, minute was hiding something, and that was in that case. That case originally held Kaburagi's old avatar. So, sinwitch niya to a pleasure gun. So, sabi ni, sabi ni Hugin. Ah, siguro ni Hugin. Normal naman kay business tam pala yun. <laughs> so, he let it slide. Right? He, he let Hugin let it slide. Akala niya, yun talaga ang tinatago ni Mina to. Alright. It's an accomplice. But suddenly, Mina to paid a visit to Kaburagi in the real world. Pusap sila. Nasabi ni... Nasabi ni... ni Kaburagi yung plano niya. And... Mina to doesn't want to go along with it. He, wa- he doesn't want the system to change. But Kaburagi wants change now. He wants he wants to change the, he wants to change the system now. Minato didn't uh, didn't go along with his plan. He parted ways. And wow, there is a plan. There is a plan to snitch to snitch all of them. Okay, which is a plan that involves Sark and you. Yung right hand man supposedly ni Donatello. Okay? Kinunchaba ng right hand man ni Donatello si Sarkozy, si Sark. So, well, a plan to be, basically a plan to, um, a plan to rat them out. To betray them. So, he ironed out the plan, he celebrated with, uh, with, with Sark's custom wine. Which is made out of gadol shit. Let me remind you. Two people, these two people will rat them out. Yes, they have a plan to rat them out. So that's how the episode ended. Wow. <clears throat> Sheesh. We also found out in this episode how, <clears throat> how Oxy One is actually being manufactured. Okay? <clears throat> if I tell you how it's actually manufactured, you might this might happen to you. Now they're motivated. <laughs> See that? <laughs> so, just, just watch the episode again, okay? You, you, you'll get the point. You'll get the point right after. So, wow. This, is a, this, was, this was a really good episode. This was a really good episode. Why? Because, well... The good guys were almost were almost got caught again. There's a plan to uh, to, to betray them. There's a plan to uh, there's now a plan to betray them, okay. which makes the um, which makes the cost which makes this which makes this story all the more interesting. Okay. Ito maglalaglag sa kanila. This conspiracy to wrap them out, I'll, I'd love how to see, I love, I love this one to, I love, I love how this one will, uh, will, will develop. How are they going to snitch our good guys, uh, our heroes, the Kaburagi and, and company? And oh, by the way, Kaburagi has, has finally convinced Natsume to help him out in this cause. So Natsume is also in which makes the what you call this, the betrayal plan more uh, more interesting to to look into. With that in mind, and uh, the incredible plot twist we just saw in the in the final scene, Decadence episode eight. Two thumbs up again. <laughs> again, I meant by again because. Last time, I gave it the two thumbs up. And for four straight weeks now, okay, Decadence has gotten the two thumbs up from me. Yeah, those are plot twists. And wow, okay. I really love to see that uh, that plan of betrayal by Sark and his, uh, 
his co-conspirator would, would develop. Okay, I want to see that develop. Either it it would fall on their faces or they are or they become successful in in ratting Kaburagi out. Okay, that, that's that's one reason why I give it the two thumbs up. Another reason is well I know it's not uh decadence ish but I really I I laugh my ass off when when everybody when uh, the whole uh, the whole commu- the whole bug community the whole bug community just puked when when Jill described how uh, when Jill described how Oxy One is actually manu- how Oxy One is actually made all right that that made me laugh my ass off okay. <laughs> That made me laugh my ass off, and of course the um, uh, the hair racing rescue attempt on uh, the the, ra- the hair racing rescue of Kaburagi's old avatar. Yep, that kept that kept me to the edge of my seat. I thought, ayon na si Hugin, malapit na. Akala ko talaga mauhuli na sila. That's why I give it the two thumbs up. It deserves the two thumbs up. This kind of an episode. Wow. The complications have come in. It wasn't just the the, the plan of betrayal that, that complicated the story. The story the, this uh, this this whole anime story. But Minato's initial refusal to to help Kaburagi out in his cause. I think that will that will play a role. Later on, uh, in, the, in the following episodes, tutok lang mga lifestyle. Decadence is a really good anime. All right, you do not want to miss out when this, um, when when this anime ends. So again, Decadence episode eight, two thumbs up. So, are, 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 are. personally, I'm excited for episode nine. All right. We're gonna see how how these how those two will betray Kaburagi and uh, and and the rest of the bug community in their in, in their impending revolt against the system. I don't know uh, I don't know how they're going to uh, how they're going to do it, but Kaburagi is an unstoppable force right now. Everyone is already sold on this idea of changing the system. So they're going to go after the Gado Factory first. Now that they have uh, Kaburagi's old avatar back, na na recover na niya. So there's nothing stopping them now. There is nothing stopping Kaburagi now. What's up, mga lifestyle? JG here. Now, um, you may have noticed that. Um, <coughs> There are only four animes in this digest right now. I got a good explanation for that. Because I deliberately missed out on, on four other animes. Namely, Toaro Kagako no Railgun, um, Apare Ranman, Super Hexeros, and pains me to say this, Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Time. All right. The problem with these four anime is they all air on a Friday evening. Okay, that won't give me enough time to to publish to to put out a video. Okay, to put out a video with all eight of them again. Okay, so I had to establish I had to establish a cut off somewhere. So my chosen cutoff is Friday morning. All right. So that gives me um, more than enough time to review all eight, and I can even I can even add a few more, which I will do in the next few weeks. So, all right, you better watch for that. You better watch for that. All right. So, like I do in my main channel. Okay. Oop, all right, there. Hit that to subscribe and get notified, so you won't so you won't be able to miss out on 
on what uh what I what I what I have uh what I have for a treat for you guys. Okay, it's now back to back to the story. <clears throat> it really went crazy uh last digest. As you as you all know, I was only able to publish that digest on a Monday morning. So uh, I feel that I've, I've let you guys down because uh, that that video was rather late. It's, be, it's mainly because of the four animes in question. So I had to um, I had to really rush my reviews for these four because they all air on a Friday evening, and I and I could only. Um, do reviews for them Saturday morning the moment I wake up I don't want to do that again <laughs> okay I don't want as much as possible I want to get I, I want to get a good I want to get a good sleep all right for my for my vocal cords sake so that's what we're gonna do now my cutoff for reviewing all of these animes is Friday morning so the period between Friday evening and um, next Friday morning, that's, that's the window I gave myself now. That's more than enough time to review all of these animes that we're, um, that we're keeping tabs on right now. So uh, with that, uh, I pray that I can give you, uh, I pray that I can uh, do a better job for you by putting out better videos, a better a better digest and an earlier publish all right I can, I can now do this so the moment you see this outro uh, this video has already um, has, uh, has, uh, has already uh, been seen by the by the public at large on a Sunday which is my intended schedule for the episode reviews digest Dapat kasi, Every Sunday, may episode reviews digest on nilalabas para sa inyo. Right. And of course, to let out my passions for anime. So, hope you understand, guys. And as for the um, for the teaser I just gave you a moment ago, well, again, if I haven't said it before, like I do in my main channel, hit that the subscribe and, of course, the bell. So that you won't miss out on any of my videos here. So uh, I hope you I hope you enjoyed this digest, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, manga lifestyle.